we see in the world today an enormous mixture of people. There are people who, who believe in God and, and those who don't. Uh, there are people that, that practice the true religion of the Catholic Church and, and of course, those who don't. And there are people that practice virtue and, and, and people that don't. And, and some of the people that we think are in one category are, are actually in a different one. But everyone is all mixed together in the world so that they're almost indistinguishable. And only God knows the secrets of a people's hearts. Only God knows the state of someone's soul. Some people that we think are actually bad are, are good, and vice versa, of course. And human life has always been like this since the beginning. But even though it's always been like this, it won't always be like this in the future because there will come a day when we will see the eternal separation of the good from the bad that our Lord is talking about in the gospel today at the last judgment. Just last week, we heard the parable of the wheat and the cockle and how the wheat, uh, the, the good plants, are, are growing together with cockle, which are weeds. And the two are so similar when they're, they're small that it's hard to pull out the, the cockle without pulling out a whole bunch of wheat at the same time. And that was the point of the parable, that the, the master of the house said not to do that. And that's a perfect image of the world. And that's why our Lord said to, to wait and let both of them grow up until the harvest. And then at the end of their, their growth period, it's, it's possible to tell which one is which, and then they can be separated. <coughs> And in that parable, the, the reapers represent the angels. And of course, the wheat represents the good people and the, the cockle represents the bad. And our Lord says that the good people at the end of the world will be placed on his right, right side, on the right side of his holy cross. And the bad people will be put on the left. And the good people will be brought to heaven and the evil will be sent to hell. On this terrifying day, each one of us will be there, and we will either be rejoicing if we are on his right side, or we will be in eternal misery if we're on his left. But if we want to be on the right side of his cross, we can only get there by following in the footsteps of our Lord's cross during our life today while we're in the world. We read in the life of St. Lawrence Justinian that when he was in his youth and he was thinking about what, what to do with his life, like, like every young person does, thinking about the choice of his vocation, he took a crucifix and he put it in front of himself and he got down on his knees in front of it. <clears throat> and he looked at the image of our Lord on the cross and as he did so, he imagined in his mind, all of the riches and honors and pleasures that he could have in the world if he pursued a worldly career and if he made that his goal in life. And then he thought about the treasures that our holy faith promises us, that, that, our, holy, that, that, our, that our Lord made, the promises that our Lord made to, to us about the joy and the happiness that the just will have forever in heaven. And he compared these two things, the goods of this world on the one hand and the, the joys of heaven on the other. And he looked at the image of our Lord on the cross and he thought to himself, what should I do? And that glance at the cross set him on the path that he would follow for the rest of his life. He decided that he wanted to be happy forever instead of just in this world. And by looking at the cross, that reminded him that in order to do that, he had to be crucified to the world in the same way that our Lord was on that cross. And he followed this path with unswerving fidelity and perseverance so that he finally became a great saint. He's not the only person that has decided to serve God like this instead of serving the world. But a lot of people come to this same conclusion and reach the same, the same decision that, that he reached, but who don't persevere to the end. A lot of people begin well, but, but the path to heaven is difficult, of course, and, 
it's narrow and, and thorny. Whereas the path of, of following this world and our, our evil inclinations and our desires is very easy, just to give in to everything that we want. So it happens a lot of times that someone trying to follow Christ will waver in his efforts to lead a holy life. And a lot of times he will end up abandoning his good intentions and the practice of piety. People even did this at the time when our Lord himself was on earth. Remember on Palm Sunday that the people of Jerusalem received him with with joy and, and they called him their king. But those very same people only a few days later rejected him and cried out to have him put to death. And that is the danger that we're always in, that we'll switch from, from Palm Sunday to Good Friday. We have to think about this when we're trying to decide which path to walk on, the path to heaven or the path to hell. Our Lord said that the kingdom of heaven is gained by violence. And he said that the people that storm heaven violently are the ones that carry it away, that that keep it. The violence that he was talking about was the violence that we have to do to our own nature, to overcome our evil inclinations. We have to keep struggling against temptation and sin throughout the course of our lives. And it takes hard work and, and perseverance. So we have to remember that. And, and when temptations come and, and they try to, to pull us off of the, the straight and narrow road, we have to look at the crucifix. And every time we do that, it'll strengthen us because it'll remind us how much our Lord suffered for us, and it'll show us how much he loves us and how much he wants us to get to heaven and how much grace he is willing to give us to help us do that. And it'll encourage us if we look at his cross because he gave us the example of how to suffer for the love of God. And if he could endure those, those terrible, unimaginable pains for love of us, then Why can't we endure a tiny, tiny fraction of that for his sake? Especially because he suffered all of that pain for us. We also have to remember that the one day that cross will appear in the heavens when our Lord comes again to judge the whole world. And we will be on one side of that cross or the other, either the right or the left. And we have to make sure that no matter what happens to us in this world, we will end up on the right side of his cross in the next. It's a terrifying thought that there are only two options, only two outcomes, only two places that we can end up on the last day, either eternally happy, eternally miserable, with no middle ground. When the angel blows the last trumpet throughout the whole earth, our body will obey this summons no matter where it is. It will arise from its tomb if we're dead. And it will either come out of our tomb glorious and beautiful, or it will come out looking horrible and disfigured and decayed and completely rotted. Our body will either be brighter than the sun or it will look like, like a ghastly corpse, like, like a zombie maybe, and covered in flames and, and terrifying to look at. Our, our soul will not want to be re- reunited with, with our body if it is in this condition, but they will be forced back together again so that they can both go down into hell. So we should think about this and resolve that no matter what it costs us, we have to follow Christ and obey his commandments and walk in the way of the cross because we cannot take a chance on our bodies rising in that state of corruption and being sentenced to hell. But if we have served our Lord in this life, then our souls will be reunited with a body that will be more beautiful than we can imagine. And it will be taken up to heaven forever. And our Lord will send his angels to separate the good from the bad and the sheep from the goats. At that moment, either the demons of hell will will grab a hold of us with a grip that we won't be able to escape and 
to pull us over to the left side. Or the good angels will come and surround us and bear us to the right side of the cross. And how can we think about this and still be lukewarm in our service of God and even take chances on our salvation? It's, we, we just can't. After this, this, this final separation, there will be a supernatural light that will illuminate everyone's conscience and all the hidden secrets of every single human being will be revealed to the rest of the world, the rest of the human race, as, as plain as day. There will be no more, no more secrets, no more errors, mistakes, or, or misunderstandings after this moment. <clears throat> and we have to think about this. But there is no third option. Either our body and soul will go up into heaven and be happy forever, or they'll go down into hell where there is nothing but darkness and horror and pain and misery. Either we will spend eternity with Jesus and Mary and receive an eternal reward for our virtue in this life, or we'll go to hell with, with Satan and the Antichrist and all of the sinners of the world and be locked in a dungeon of fire with them forever. Either we'll share God's infinite beatitude and be with him forever, or we will receive his eternal rejection and condemnation and curse. If we think about these things frequently during our lives, that thought will always keep us in the service of God. It will keep us in his grace and in his love, and it will also strengthen our determination to imitate our Lord until the day we die. And this thought will keep us all the way until death and to the other side, where it will protect us and place us at the right hand of his cross on the last day to be brought with him to heaven forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.